So we now move on to the last section of chemical analysis, which is about a type of chemistry known as chemical tests. Chemical tests are a way in which you can work out what an unknown substance is using some reliable kind of experiments or tests to give you reliable results. Um, we'll look at notes in a second, but the scenario you might be imagining is like this. Let's say you find yourself looking at a random white powder. And you do not know what this random white powder is, but you might be able to guess a couple of things. So it's an unknown solid. It's obviously a solid at room temperature, so it's quite a high, high melting point and boiling point. It is a white powder, so probably not a metal. It's probably not a non-metal either, because they're normally gases. It's probably an ionic solid, because lots of, chem lots of compounds in chemistry are actually ionic um, compounds or ionic solids. If we go along with the fact that it might be an ionic compound, there's two parts to an ionic compound you might remember. There's the cation, which is generally the metal part, and the anion. So if we're trying to identify what this compound is, we actually have two bits we need to work out. We need to work out what the cation is, what the anion is. Let's say I do a test, I know I haven't got on what the tests are yet, and I work out that this cation happens to be a sodium ion. That's a metal ion, it's positively charged, must be cation. And let's say I do an anion test, and it might tell me the anion is the chloride ion. If I've worked out those two parts, that must tell me that the compound is NaCl sodium chloride. So that's the kind of process we're going through here. We're doing the test for anionic compounds. There's other tests that exist for covalent compounds, etc. But we're just taking the ionic compounds. We're going to have to work out both cation tests and anion tests, and those two things together will give us everything we need to know about a particular compound. So the notes are split into those two sections. The first section we'll look at is this one called cation tests. There's two different types of them. Then we'll look at the next section, is called anion tests. There's three different tests you're meant to know for it. So the first test we look at is a quite useful, simple test known as a flame test. Uh, clues in the name, we're going to use a flame to work out what particular um, ion a compound might contain. So obviously if we were in school you'd be doing this yourself, so I'm going to have to describe it to you. I'll try also to link a video as well so you can see it actually done in real life. Here's the general principle below, I'll not read through these because it's quite hard just to read off a list. It's kind of sketched out here. Essentially you've got your random powder, you want to test it, you want to find out what the cation is here. You can't do anion tests with flame tests, just cation tests. I need to get it into a Bunsen burner flame and quite a hot one, not a safety flame like the roaring kind of blue flame. So I need some way of getting that compound in here. What I will be looking for when I get it in there is to see a colour. Different cations, different metal ions, have distinctive colours to their flame which allows you to identify them. Now the question is how do I get that compound into the flame? I'm not going to use my hands. Currently use a spatula either because it's too big also gives off its own flame colour. Essentially I need to use a bit of metal to stick that powder to it, to stick it in the flame, but the metal I use to stick it in the flame can't have its own flame colour. The thing we use is what's known as a nichrome wire. A nichrome wire is an alloy, so a mixture of metals. I think the mixture is um, nickel and chromium. Why we use them is that they don't give off their own flame colour, so it'll allow us to see what the colour is just of the compound we're putting on the flame. So we're going to use this powder basically to hold some of this powder, use this um, sorry, wire to hold some of this powder into the flame to see the colour there. Now I can't just go straight and do that, there's a little process I have to go through first, because I can't guarantee that this is completely clean. If it's not clean, I might get a false result if there's something left over from the last experiment we do. So the cleaning process is like such, and this is contained in your notes, I'm not just giving you extra detail, you do need to know this. We will clean it by dipping it in a beaker of concentrated, so not very dilute, very concentrated hydrochloric acid. So we'll just literally dip the end of the beaker in there. The process is, once I've dipped it into the beaker, I take it to my hot Bunsen burner flame, on the roaring flame, and stick the wire in that flame. Hopefully what I'll see is that there might be a little um, colourful impurity showing off in the flame at the start, but as the acid and the flame react together, the colour will disappear as the impurity is used up. So I can do that back and forth a few times, dip it, put in the flame, dip it, put in the flame, until I should see no colour from the wire. It should be completely pure and clean. Now I get to actually testing the actual substance. So I've got a clean wire here. I've done that cleaning process with concentrated hydrochloric acid and the Bunsen burner flame. 
I now need to get my powder into my flame to see its colour. Now, we have a logical challenge for you here. The way that wire is now, it's actually going to be quite hard to do that. That's a dry wire and a dry powder. It's just going to fall off. So I've got a wee step just to get it um, to stick to the wire. Again, I'll just use a beaker of concentrated hydrochloric acid. So if I wet the wire with the hydrochloric acid just by dipping it in, it's now a wet wire. If I dip it in the powder now, the powder's going to stick. So I've got powder stuck in my wire. I can now stick that in down on some flame and observe the colour that I get. All those steps are contained here and even a little diagram form just to explain that. The important bit though is knowing what the colours are and again I'm just going to have to describe them to you, get them to write you down but I'll show you a video which will show you what it looks like in real life. So there are five cations you're meant to know their flame test for. So I'll write them down for you here, I'll just do them on go and then you can copy them in. So these are the five ions you're meant to know with their colours and we'll talk through them. The five ions you're meant to be able to spot with a flame test are lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium and copper. So just being aware, it's not just the element, it's in the compound, so it's the ion form of it. Lithium plus Na plus K plus uh, Ca2 plus Cu2 plus. That's the ions we're testing for. Lithium is a crimson colour, it's kind of like a pinky red colour. Sodium is yellow or orange. Now one week quirk of how Ca mark these is, sodium is a bit ambiguous about whether it actually is yellow or orange, it depends on the person looking at it. One thing they don't want you to write though is both yellow and orange. It's kind of an either or kind of situation. So either write yellow or orange in the exam. Potassium, as you've seen before, is lilac, gives a lilac flame. Calcium is brick red. Brick red is kind of like an orangey red. Imagine the colour of some donics. Copper is blue green. Now, a little bit different a contrast here. We said with this case you're only meant to say one of the colours. If it's a dash in C as eyes, you're meant to write both because when you actually do the copper test, you do see both shades of blue and green. So both colours are there in the sample, so you should write down both of them. So we've been learning there just to know those flame colours off by heart.